Hi, it's Polly Litovsky here with My Word Publishing, and I have cajoled my friend Cheryl I Love, author of What Do We Got There, Cheryl? Because you got two books next to you there. Author of Forever Fit and Fabulous. Over Forever Fit and Flexible, Feeling Fabulous at 50 and Beyond. <laughs> How did and I mess that up? <laughs> just a little bit. The Reluctant Ninja, How a Middle-Aged Princess Became a Warrior Queen. Yeah. Both available on Amazon. Yeah, I color my 98 pound friend that could kick y'all's ass. That's what I <laughs> So anyway, so I wanted to talk about podcasting and pod match in particular, because a lot of people have questions about this. And I always uh, kind of just tell them the high level overview, like if there's 10 levels deep of something. <laughs> I'm going as deep as level one or something. And so I really just wanted to have this bigger conversation about what we know about pod match, because Cheryl has a podcast and she is a she's on the podcast side of pod match and that's the part we don't know and what should we expect from uh, you know and i ain't getting up not a pod match i did you know i don't have no affiliate link or anything like that i really just want to talk about it because it's so big these days so that's what this is all about so with that as a preamble could you sort of tell us the basics, the high level overview about pod match, and then we'll kind of dive in from there. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, I, I absolutely love pod match full disclosure. I do have an affiliate link, but even if you use it, it doesn't really get me a whole lot of, you know, income. So I'm saying this and explaining all of this to you and sharing this information, um, from not only all the love in my heart, but my incredible respect for Podmatch. It is a platform that is so easy to use. And as you said, I'm on it as a podcaster from the podcasting end of it, but I am also, I have a guest profile as well. So that's the nice thing about Podmatch is that you can create a profile both as a host and as a guest. Uh, it is very easy to use. It's very simple. Uh, you just create your profile. You put in your, um, you know, like categories, a lot of, you know, the keywords and stuff, just like you would do a profile anywhere else. The nice thing about Podmatch, they describe it as a dating site, you know, for pod podcasters and podcast That's sexy. Guests. <laughs> it's real sexy, um, especially for someone who has never never online dated. Thank you, God. Um, and who's been married for a thousand years. Yeah. It's like, what does that mean exactly? And do I really want to sign up for this site? Because That's you right. hear so that much means... about online dating, right? You swipe to the right or swipe to the left. Okay. <laughs> and kidding. they have their version of that, but you don't swipe white, swipe right or swipe left. You can either, um, you know, match or pass. So let me explain a little bit more how it goes. Um, you check your matches. I usually do it every morning, every evening, and I check my matches. It's like, oh, you have three matches. They never really give you more than three matches at one time. So you have the opportunity, either as a guest from the guest end of it or from the host end of it, to review the match. You see the person's profile. You see you get to determine if you will be a good fit for their show or, you know, if vice versa. And then you make the decision. You have the opportunity to even check out some of their websites uh, or and their social media links. So you're really getting to know this person, you know, without having to just go right in. Um, and then you decide if you want to match or if you, you know, you want to, let's say from my standpoint as a podcaster, if I see somebody's profile that I like, then I can message them. And I'll say, hey, I'd really love to invite you to be a guest on my show, The Feminine Project, which is about blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you're interested and thank you for considering the invitation. And then maybe a couple of days later, I'll get a response that, um, you know, hey, I'd love to be on your show. Or I don't hear anything at all. Or I'll get my very most favorite response, which is pass. You know, so-and-so has decided to pass on this uh, invitation okay. at this time. Hang on a minute. I want to make sure I understand this straight. So the, the 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 guest goes and they make a profile and you, the podcaster, have your profile. So you're saying Podmatch goes in and plays matchmaker and sends each other the matches and you can say yay or nay? Yes, exactly. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to talk as from my perspective as a podcaster, because then it gets yeah. just too confusing for me to try and do, do both. But I've got my profile as a podcaster. 
and it has all of my information. It's got my, you know, bio, what the show is about. Uh, it's got the link to um, my website as well as some of the like Apple so people can listen to the podcast and see if they want to be on the show. Because one of the things that you really want to be careful with in doing podcasts and trying to become be a guest on other people's shows, you want to make sure that it's a really good fit. Yeah. Because you can actually do yourself more harm than good by being on a show that isn't a good fit for you, it would be better not to be on any show at all. So that's why you really want to make sure that it is a good fit. Don't get all excited and think I, I'm going to take this invitation to be on this person's show. Cause I just want to be on another show. Just make sure that it's a really good fit for you. So that's why they make it so easy to be able to, um, you know, check out your prospective host and vice versa, your prospective guest. So then you decide, yes, I do want to be on this person's show. And um, if you're just seeing my profile without me sending you an invitation, you can actually message me and say, I would like to be a guest on your show. Would you please consider it? Here's my profile link. You know, check this out. This is why I think I'd be a good fit for the show. Then I can go back and look at your profile and think, I think it would be a good fit or nah, I don't think so. And if it's a definite no, then I can just hit pass. So Without they've got that button on the top. You don't have to have the communication going back and forth. and Right. And, you know, I've tried that before on, on guests that I thought, yeah, I'm not really sure. But once you start having the messaging going back and forth, it gets a little bit awkward, you know, kind of like dating would be. Right. Okay. You know, it's like, I'm not really sure if I want to go out with you, but you know, if we talk a little bit more, maybe I would, but you know, and then it's like, why did I say that? Yeah. So just think so about yes your or dating. No. Okay. Yeah. Yes or no. And, and it, you also has an, I have another option. Like if somebody, if I get a match uh, and they say, you know, would you like to interview this person, you know, and I'll look and I'm thinking, you know, maybe, but I'm not really sure. There's another option you can say maybe later. Hmm. So you have the opportunity to message somebody, you have the opportunity to just hit pass, you have the opportunity to hit match, which means, yes, I think we would be paired up and we'd be a really good fit for each other. That sounds a little creepy. Um, or you can just say maybe later, and then eventually it'll come back in your feed at a later date. Can you tell me as a podcaster, when you get a lead, we'll call it, mm -hmm. is that a lead? Mm -hmm. And what are you looking for? when Podmatch has said, I think you're a good match, then what are you looking at to assure it is? I just do a di deep, deep dive into the, the guest's profile. I look at their website. I look at their social media. I basically stalk them. Um, being a ninja, that's really fun for me to do, and I'm really good at it. So I really get down to the nitty gritty. If I can find some um, videos that they've done, that's what I do. And that's when I determine, you know, that the person would be really good or not as a fit for my show. There are times when I'll get a match and I'll just look at the profile and I will know immediately yes or immediately no. But just to make sure that I'm making the right decision, I always look at their information. So are you looking at their their messaging, their their comfort level, talking on the podcast, or what are you looking for? You know, it's really hard to get that um, comfort level, you know, what the person, how they do present on a show. Uh, some of the some of the guests will actually have like little videos, like pitch videos on their profile that you can listen to. But that doesn't tell you a lot about how they would respond in a conversational situation. And my show is more conversational. It's not like Q&A. Um, you can also find, you know, just a lot of little snippets on their social media. That's what I like. That's why I look at that, just to see how they present themselves um, before I make a decision on them. Okay. So I, I have heard twice. So I, I, you know, and there's millions of podcasters on Podmatch, right? So oh, I, yes. I don't know that this is indicative, but this is my question to you because I've heard a couple times now that podcasters have either, you know, canceled at the last minute and gone out of business and asked for money in order to record them. Does that ring any bells with you? Or am I hearing To me, that doesn't worst? sound like pod match type of people. Um, okay. That does sound definitely like the podcasting world, that that definitely would be a possibility. Um, I have been doing it, oh my gosh, 
four years, five, I think I'm in my fifth year of podcasting. And in five years, I've only had like three or four no shows, which I think is don't show remarkable. up. You mean? Yeah, they ghost you. They just don't show up. And, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry this came up. And we all understand that because we do have things come up. And sometimes I'll say, hey, are you OK? You know, just want to make sure. And there were two that never heard back from them again. And that's fine. But that's what I love about Podmatch is that the quality of potential guests that I'm getting are definitely committed. And the podcasters who are on Podmatch are also definitely committed. So we're not doing this just as a lark, you know, podcasting is an awful lot of work yeah. and you work really hard to develop a brand, to develop a reputation. And the last thing you want to do is muck that up by being irresponsible. So you want to be responsible. You want to be professional when you say you're going to be somewhere. Uh, having said that, I screwed up a, a, a guest this morning, made a mistake with a link. So we laughed about that. It worked out okay. Um, but you just really want to present yourself in a professional way. You you don't want to say, you know, gee, something came up or I forgot or whatever. If you do miss an appointment, you know, just beg forgiveness and say, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake. Can we reschedule? If somebody's asking you for money to be on their show, mm -hmm. laugh and say no. Because laugh, say bugger off. Well, yeah, you. I didn't want to say exactly what I was thinking, uh, but, you know, podcasting, like I said, it is a lot of work and it's a lot of time that you invest into it and a lot of money as well. Um, I think it's perfectly fine um, if you ask for a donation. I have never asked for a donation. Sometimes people will just give me one and I'm very grateful for that, but I'm putting myself out there. This is my platform and I'm the one that decided to do it. So why should I ask for money? Um I have actually had one person, oh gosh, okay, like, I don't know what the term would be in dating terms, but she found me and she, you know, one had this long conversation with me and just loved me and wanted me on her show and blah, blah, blah. And she was so excited and she was so enthusiastic. And I thought, wow, this is going to be a lot of fun. So then after I said yes, she sent me the link where I can, you know, fill out some of the forms and stuff. And then at the very end, she was going to charge me $497 to pay for the processing fee and the you production. Shut your fee. mouth. Nope. Didn't bring it what, up at all. Never said a word about it when we were talking. And when I looked at that, I, you know, shut your mouth. That's not exactly what I said. It's like, <laughs> excuse me. You know, I have a podcast. I know what the production costs are, the fees. And believe me, that's not, you know, that's not it. You should have sent her a bill just saying, oh, have <laughs> me then is 497. So, hey, it's equal. Oh, gosh, I probably lot. should have. Yeah, but it was just so amazing. And to this day, I still get um, emails from this person you know, hey, be on my show. Hey, do this. Hey, do that. And I'm like, hey, leave me alone. No. So, so that's really considered unprofessional. I guess. You know, well, let me ask this. What should we, the guests, expect from the host? Should we expect them to pitch our books? Because as someone who trains people on how to market their books, I say that's kind of a no-no. You leave it up to the host to market your book. I want to make sure that we're on the same page. No, I I do interview a lot of authors. Uh -huh. And of course, I've been guests on other people's shows as well. But it's definitely, you know, I, I'll say, tell us about your book. But I, I do want my guests to be able to talk about their book. I don't want them to say, hey, thanks a lot for having me on your show. Look at this book I've written. Isn't it wonderful? And then just go off and running. I don't want to know that. I want to get to know the person at first, you know, okay, what do you do? You know, what, what um, prompted you to write a book? Tell us a little bit about that journey. That's what I want to know. And then, okay, where can people buy your book? But I don't want to be doing all of the um, promotional stuff because I don't know their book. If I had a, to buy a book or read every single book that came my way for a guest, I mean, I'd never get anything done. Yeah, I think we're on the same page. 
what I'm saying is you're talking about your story or message, depending on if it's fiction or nonfiction exactly. um, or memoir, but mm -hmm. you don't go in there uh, with the promotional eyeballs on. There is kind of a, a rule out there. Let me ask you if you've heard of this rule, a rule in uh, radio hosts is really what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and the rule is they mention it five times. They kind of know that. And that's what I say. The guest knows that they should be talking about your book, naming it, saying where you can get it, saying your name mm -hmm. and author of that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the general rule is with PR that they mention it five times. So they know that going mm -hmm. in, you don't have to be pimping yourself and looking like a, you know, a book pimp you're there to talk mm -hmm. about your messaging and your you exactly know, story exactly and, and that's kind of unprofessional if you just you know hey you know this this is the book and buy my book and all that kind of stuff if you are promoting or as you say pimping which i like that <laughs> um especially <laughs> since we're talking about dating yeah that sounds great <laughs> um but yeah you don't want to be the one who's constantly bringing it up most of the time when I have an author on, they start telling their story in a way that, you know, it then segues beautifully toward the end of the show of about the book, you know, why they wrote it. We already know the author. And when you know somebody, then you're more interested in buying their book. You, um, if you just hear somebody's giving you reading or doing readings. Oh my gosh, don't do that. That's really, you know, I'll read you this part of my book. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> we are already, we're getting I'm to write that you. down. <laughs> <laughs> no Will you chapter. please use a red pen? Yes. Don't <laughs> do that. Do not read um, Yeah, from your book. I'm going to bring something up here because you told me one time something about uh, the professional. So this is pod match. If I'm a guest, all right. Yes. So mm -hmm. you were telling me that the standard and professional, well, you told me the professional one, which I believe is 54 a month, 57 a month. Okay. Okay. 57 a month. Um, that you guys, the hosts are actually told and it's actually spread more. You Podmatch actually sends your links out and matches more podcasters if you're on the professional level. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, it's a service that they're providing. And so I love that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so I guess I'm on, I'm on, I'm not professional. <laughs> Proud of that. <laughs> I guess they must have overheard some of our conversations, Polly. I'm not professional. So wait a minute. So me as the guest, if I sign up for the professional $57 a month, which frankly for book marketing, I cannot, I cannot think of a better way to spend $57 a month. Please. Take oh, absolutely. Money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but if you, the podcaster are not, and you're in the standard, do mm -hmm. we get matched up? Oh yeah. We still do. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. And you, the podcaster gets incentivized if um if you interview someone on the professional oh yes membership yes because i have the opportunity to get a commission um for you know well i can get a commission for both but you can get a higher commission and now i'm not talking about a huge amount of money i am not buying that island in the pacific yet <laughs> you get okay. both dollars huh both dollars. yeah right right exactly and it's really weird i have no idea how they would um calculate the commission sometimes it's like whoa i was only that small and then an the next person i interview it's like wow that was you know so i don't understand it i just trust it because um again i trust the people who are running the show they're very very good they're very ethical okay. um so yeah so i will get sometimes small or a bigger one. Now, this is something because a lot of people, there are some people still on Podmatch. So if any of um, those people are listening who still do have the, what they call it, the legacy subscription or legacy program, which is the free program. So for example, when I signed up, I was like, okay, I'm on the free program, but now I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to go to the next level and get the paid account. And when I did that, um, I got a, a, you know, a message that makes sure that you want to do this because once you go to the paid one, you cannot go back to the original one because okay. we are phasing it out. Mm -hmm. So people who have been on the free plan 
for a long time, they can stay there as long as they want. Oh. However, if somebody approaches me and they send me a message, hey, I would really like to be a guest on your show. And I look and I get a message at the top when I look at that profile, please note, you will not be you know, receiving any kind of a commission or you're not be eligible to receive any commission for this guest because they are on the legacy you know, plan. And I will sometimes, if I'm really interested in that guest, I will sometimes interview them and have them on my show, but there's a lot of people out there that I can get a little bit of a commission if I interview them instead. And does that make me mercenary? No, it makes me smart. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I'm looking at this here. It says, if you get the professional, you get the top profile placement in search results. Mm-hmm top placement and match results, access to premium search filters. Yeah, I've always thought, you know, $57 a month for book marketing. Frankly, it's awesome. Let me unshare here. And how do we reach out to you? If it's, if it's through Podmatch and someone finds you, they're not, you're not connected by Podmatch as that matching service, but someone finds you and says, yeah, I think I'm a good fit for this. Do all the podcasters have a submission button these days versus sending a one sheet? I mean, are those out? Are those like, oh, that's so they're pretty passe yeah. and and okay. it really annoys me when people send me a one sheet. It doesn't happen <laughs> anymore because I use Podmatch. But you know, I'd have people sending me their one sheet and it's like, fantastic. You're sending me a big long list of links that don't link anywhere. So I have to go to every link, look it up and add the link. And that's a whole lot more extra work for me. Um, so that's another thing why I love Podmatch. But I would not be so concerned about doing your one sheet as far as for podcasters. Okay. I'd be more concerned about just doing something digitally. Um, you know, you could do a digital one sheet where the links are all there. So you can just cut and paste. So it's not extra work for the podcaster. Um, or I would just use a, a site like Podmatch. I mean, it really truly is great. Okay. It's so the difference would be if um, all the podcasters now have a submission button that they ask all the questions that they want to know. Like what, uh, what's your messaging? What are your links? Is that how it works? All of the messaging and the links should be on the guest's profile. So that's basically their digital one sheet. Boom. And tell us uh, about your podcast just because you're here. So. Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> so my podcast is called The Femininja Project. The Femininja. It is about, oh yeah, well, of course, Ninja. It's about um, overcoming obstacles, personal empowerment, restoring human dignity, alternative health and healing, Finding your voice, standing your ground, living well, and looking good. And it's all kind of loosely based on my experience as a martial artist. I have met some of the most amazing people that I never would have had the opportunity or the privilege to meet uh, if it were not for doing this show. And I have heard some of the most appalling stories that came up out, you know, with such incredibly beautiful endings um, incredible people. So it's just been one hell of a journey because when I first started podcasting, um, didn't know what a podcast was. I didn't remember what you remember that, of course. Oh yeah. Did. Cheryl could hardly send an email. I swear to God. Right. Holly is not exaggerating. I'm it not. Is <laughs> I am the biggest <laughs> techno moron known to mankind. I'm a baby boomer. I miss the rotary phone. I miss the days when spam was ham in a can. You know, what can I say? Uh, came into all this stuff, kicking and screaming and look at me now. Yeah, you know, I, in talking to authors too, I tell them, oh God, please don't start a podcast. Just be a <laughs> guest on a podcast. Am I right or am I right? You are so right. Thank you. You are so right. It's a right. lot of work. A it's a tremendous work. amount of work. And let's put it to you this way. If you're an author and you're starting a podcast because you want to help promote your book, what are you going to do? Are you just going to have solo episodes and talk about your book the whole time? 
Are you going to have guests on your show so you can talk about your book? You know, I'm not talking about, I never promote my book. The only promotions I do is if you see the pictures in the background, there you go. When I'm doing my show, it is not about me. It's not about my books. And it's really hard for me to say it's not about me because everything usually is, um, <laughs> right? But it's not, it's about the guest and it's about the audience first and foremost. Mm. I want to give something of value to the audience with every single show that I do, every single guest. What are my listeners? What do they want to hear? What do I think would help them? What could they take from this one show that they could apply to their lives and make their lives better, easier, healthier, you know, stronger, warrior, the whole thing? As we wrap it up here, could you please tell us about, first of all, these two books you have are completely different books, and both of them are nonfiction. Both of them are from your story. Let's start with uh, what I will never get forever fit and fabulous over 50 forever or something. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just think Fs, F's. okay? <laughs> A long stream of Fs, forever fit and flexible, feeling fabulous at 50 and beyond. Yes. Can, can you that, understand where I can't get that straight? <laughs> yes, okay. I can. I But I do can. love it. I do love it. So anyway. Okay. So forever fit and flexible is my first line. <laughs> Okay, so then the second book actually uh, was published last March. So it's been a year. The Reluctant Ninja, How a Middle-Aged Princess Became a Warrior Queen. That one is based on my crazy journey into the strange new world of men and martial arts. I started studying martial arts at the tender young age of 47. I did not go willingly, thus The Reluctant Ninja. And um, yeah, it took my sensei three years to get me on the mat. He was my acupuncturist before he became my teacher. And there's a really long backstory there. And it's quite the uh, roller coaster ride. So it's it's a memoir with a lot of life's lessons, hilariously funny stories, really heartbreaking stories and stories that are nothing but spirit and grit. Oh, and that one I got two awards wow. and uh, hit number one on Amazon bestseller in three categories. Awesome. Thanks to the team at My Word Publishing. Thanks, I'll, I'll write you the check very shortly. But seriously, thanks thanks for your time and, and expertise. I really just wanted to talk to someone about what goes on on the podcaster's side. Yeah. We've yeah. had many people talk to us about what you should do to get on podcasts. Let's hear it from your side. So we are going to put the affiliate link. So you make sure I have that. We're going to drop that in here on um, on this uh, YouTube channel. Okay. So, so you can get your buck 50. <laughs> it does go a long way, Polly. That, yes. you know, uh, that adds up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And seriously, uh, so if anyone wants to join Podmatch, go for the $57 one. Don't muck around. Seriously. Don't muck around. Um, that's what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. I, I'm it's wondering. definitely worth it. You'll get a lot more, um, you know, hits and matches and, um, I think it, there'll be more quality, wouldn't they? Yeah, they okay. really are. Let's see they if really they are. match us up. That'd be funny. <laughs> that would be <laughs> wonderful. But Hey, thanks for having me, Polly. I've really enjoyed this. And what just tickles me is that you're thanking me for my expertise four years ago, five years ago, would you have ever thought that would happen or that would be uh, possible? No, because you wouldn't even be able to send me the email saying, know. you know, how do I I'd log be saying, on? what's a link? <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us. Wave it out, girl. Wave it out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh.